Welcome to season three of Talk Dead to Me. I am your host, Johnny O'Dell. I'm the social media manager for The Walking Dead, and we are back, baby. I hope you all had a safe and wonderful holiday. I know I did. This week, we have Walking Dead World Beyond actor Jelani Aladdin as our guest. He plays Will. We saw a lot of him at the end of season one, and I can't wait for season two. Now, outside of joining our little zombie universe, Jelani's also known for starring as Kristoff in the Broadway version of Disney's Frozen. He's also been in Choir Boy, Violet, a Central Park version of Hercules, and dozens of other incredible roles. I also have a Seven Degrees of Kevin Bacon link to him. That's really fun. You guys will hear that at the end of the interview. He's an absolute delight, and I can't wait for you to hear his story. Without further ado, it's Jelani Aladdin. So you grew up in Brooklyn, specifically Brownsville, sure. right? Mm-hmm. One, uh, well, I shouldn't give my address out to the public, but yeah, don't do that. Grew up, <laughs> grew up on the streets of Brownsville, Brooklyn, um, and for me, family was really big growing up. Um, so a lot, my house, particularly, was like the epicenter of where everyone came to find love and to find healing and to share laughs and to drink and to party. Like it was my house growing up that had all the parties in the backyard. Wow. Um, we, we also went to a church that was like around the corner from my house, um, and that also made us feel like we were part of the community as well. So that 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 block radius um, <laughs> in Brownsville was critically important to my upbringing. I think you mentioned this in an interview that church is actually kind of where you got going with singing. Yeah, it's a, it's a funny story because I, I, it wasn't my first impulse to be a singer. Um, it was mm. mainly my mother who was like, go up there and sing, get up there, like, <laughs> don't do it. And I was like, please don't, I don't sound as good as these other guys. There's uh, there some other guys in my church who could really, really sing. And I wasn't like, you know, the crazy riffer and like, you know, the, the big gospel singer. I had this small little quiet voice. Um, really? and she would force me to go up there and I did it. And it sort of became a thing that I started to do weekly. Then I got involved with the choir there. Um, and then there was a step team that we had at my church that was really cool and fun. And that um, taught me a whole lot of principles and discipline. Um, and that's how that kind of began. And then my first gig, quote unquote gig, um, was a family member hiring myself and my cousin who played the drums. Um, to like do like a little small act at like somebody's uh, birthday celebration. Wow. Um, it's so crazy how like that like sparked the seed for like a lifetime of performance. Yeah. Is it true you wanted to be a Power Ranger? Oh my God. Is it true? I still do. <laughs> I, I still wake up wanting, I mean, I'm still hoping to like get my power someday. Um, That whole like uh, December 21st thing that was going around where it was like Black people. <laughs> I was on December 21st. I was like, yes, this is the day I become a Power Ranger. Finally, it's happening. Um, and oddly enough, I'm not, you would think that I wanted to be the Red Ranger, but I think I want to be like the Blue Ranger. I, I personally oh, love Billy. Blue. Billy, absolutely, Billy. Um, wow. I think Billy was smart and cool, and he kind of like ran the show. Like, actually, if you really think about it, it's like, yeah, the others like had like hype and energy, but Billy's like, guys, this is how we actually do it. This is how we actually solve the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Power Rangers. This is going to make me sound stupid, but when I found out as a kid that all the fighting scenes were just dubbed from Japan and that just the scenes that you see them like conversing was all American, like I, it blew my mind. I was Wait, like, what? I didn't know that either. I'm finding that out right now. What? Yeah, it started in Japan and those and were like Japanese own- actors. I think maybe not for like 100%, at least in the first few seasons, that's, that was wow. true. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm blowing your mind right now. So you really are. I'm really disappointed. And, and I know. I'm so- <laughs> I, I mean, maybe some of it, maybe some I mean, of it, the close up shots. I don't know. What do you mean Kimberly didn't do those 56 uh, backflips? <laughs> oh my gosh. I see half of them at every Comic Con or when we had Comic Cons. All right, Pete. All right. It'll come back. It'll come back. <laughs> it'll all come back. I know. All right. So. Uh, but, um, you- so I collected, but but the funny part is that I collected every single Megazord that came out with Power Rangers. Oh, hell and, yeah. Um, one day, my dad like threw them all out and it was the saddest day because that was the day I knew I had to begin to let go of my fantasy of becoming a Power Ranger. But I still have that small glimmer of hope somewhere inside that it'll, that like I'll wake up and like some crystal will be floating in front of me and it'll be like blue and I grab it and it'll like <laughs> transform yeah. Power Ranger. <laughs> I really want that for you, Johnny. I think that'd be fantastic. Um, 
You probably saw like the new Power Rangers movie and were like, shit, why am I not in this movie? Yeah, I was like, where's my audition? Come on. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> well, and then I see every Marvel, every Marvel movie that comes out and I'm like, why am I not a superhero? And then The Walking Dead comes along and I'm like, hey. Hey, we got something. We got a genre piece. <laughs> You'd probably be like super method if you were in Power Rangers. You'd be like Daniel Day-Lewis in Lincoln where you're walking around still as a Power Ranger, like even when you're not filming. Absolutely. They're like, does he know he's not a Power Ranger? <laughs> Uh, so growing up in high school, you, um, actually went to Connecticut, right? Yeah. So, um, in a, in a kind of weird twist of fate, I didn't actually get into any New York city public high schools and some, I think I filled out the form wrong or something happened. Um, and so I like was kind of forced to look at other options and I looked at boarding school because my cousin had went to boarding school. And this program called A Better Chance reached out to me and said, hey, you want to come in for an interview for this program in New Canaan, Connecticut, which is like the complete opposite different world than Brownsville, Brooklyn. No black people to be found. I was just going to say, um, pretty. it sounds very white. Yeah, it's very white, very <laughs> affluent, extremely affluent, still is mm. extremely affluent. Sure. Um, and um, I went there and I was like, yeah, sign me up. Like, like um, uh, put me in the heat of all of this. And, and let me show you that I can, I can, you know, rise up to the occasion. And mm-hmm. I really did. And I really learned a lot about <laughs> um, systemic racism at a young, early age. I learned a lot about, um, you know, how to get through the world when you don't see yourself reflected every day. Mm-hmm. And um, I kind of became like a little bit of the center of attention because of that too. Um, oh, yeah. because, I, because I found the arts there at that high school. Um, and it was like kind of like my like calling card to um, to uh, small town fame. <laughs> wow! Yeah, absolutely. And you, when did Suzical the musical happen for you? Oh, Suzical the musical. Um, so that happened my sophomore year of high school is when, um, so I didn't want to play football because I'm like, I was what, five, nine, five, ten, and weighing like 130 pounds, like skinniest little boy that you ever did see. And I was oh, like, man. if I play football, I will die. Like, it's just, it's just, this is going to be morbid at this point. It's, it's yeah. just, there's no point. Um, and so my friends were already involved in the drama program and I was in the choir and they were like, come audition for the musical. And I was like, y'all are crazy. I can't do that. That is too much what do you what do you mean you have to sing act and dance like well I've never even heard of that well I had seen Broadway before but I didn't really understand that like it was just like like in my mind when when I was a kid seeing a Broadway show I didn't realize those were humans (laughs) I was like those are actual humans up there or are they robots like how are they doing this I think you were seeing a production of Cats I I, close it was close it was the Lion King so (laughs) oh oh I was close very close (laughs) <laughs> um, and so Suzical was happening as like the freshman sophomore musical and I was like fine I'll audition whatever cool um, I went and auditioned and somehow they cast me as the cat in the hat and I was like okay now now what and <laughs> kind of had to like hold my hand through every step of that process because I had never done anything before I never acted before never sang for a huge crowd of a thousand people before I never danced and never put it all together. like there's so many things that I had to learn like on the fly um yeah. which kind of like just like is my life I feel like <laughs> I feel like I'm <laughs> constantly thrown into these situations that are um brand new and I have to make do and and, and make them work and and learn on uh learn while working so were you scratching an itch when you got to play the cat in the hat? Like, does, is that what kind of like had like a light bulb moment for you? Maybe, you know, there was a small light bulb. It was like flickering and okay. it, you know, it, it like wasn't screwed in all the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and I was like, actually, like I was actually pulled out. I was like, I don't want to do any, I don't want to do this after this. It was mm-hmm. too much work. Um, I felt like I was going insane for three months trying to learn lines in my kitchen while washing dishes and singing songs from like YouTube videos and trying to like mimic what they were doing <laughs> on the YouTube videos. Yeah. Um, and I was like, this is too much work. And then my best friend's mom was like, if you leave this, you are missing out on the rest of your life. Um, wow. you, could, you really have something special here. And I was like, all right, if this woman believes in me this much, I'm gonna keep auditioning. And it wasn't until about my junior year in high school when I did Cabaret and I played mm. the MC that I was oh, like, you're... yeah, sign me up for this. 
okay this is this is some cool shit <laughs> <laughs> you're lucky my high school wouldn't there was like a whole riot with the parents to do cabaret so we had to oh do rent gosh. instead I mean, which is great i mean i love rent i was like how is rent anyway yeah less risque i mean i mean i guess rent is less forward about sex um yeah. i think cabaret kind of just is like in your face like we are selling sex you know what i mean it's yeah <laughs> so you end up at nyu uh, Tish, which is one of the most prestigious acting programs uh, in America, probably the yeah. world. How does that happen? Like, what's I imagine that's a really crazy process to apply and, for. You know, back in what when I what was I go to college in two thousand eight, two thousand nine, when I was applying to colleges, like it was still rare for people to go to like school for theater and for for acting for musical theater, particularly. Um, and I, coming from a program where most of the guys are going on to academic um, colleges and Ivy Leagues, they were kind of like, we don't really know how this works, how this goes down. So I had to do a lot of the research by myself and kind of like go to each school and audition at schools. And um, there was something about the energy at NYU um, starting a new program. Um, Kent Gash was leading the program. He's a black director. Um, feeling that new energy and them wanting to celebrate the individuals that they brought to the school, not just like make you a cookie cutter, like five, six, seven, eight, you know, yeah. they're like, I, who are you? Like, what are you, like, what are you actually about? Um, mm -hmm. And that really intrigued me. And I was like, I have to go and be, to be back in New York city and see people of color around me. I needed some flavor back in my life. <laughs> um, so, too much potato salad. Oh, too much. And not enough, <laughs> not enough celery, not enough seasoning, not enough, no, paprika, no, no. you know, um, the egg was overcooked, overboiled too hard. <laughs> These are all facts. <laughs> um, and so I needed to come back to that. I need to come back to me. I read that you have immigrant parents. I'm curious. Uh, I know it's a stereotype, but oftentimes it's true that they, you know, want their kids to excel in, you know, sort of traditional roles, uh, lawyer, doctor, etc. So oh, I'm curious, were they, uh, people like your mom as well, like just you know, were they hesitant about your direction or were they excited? Like, how did that play out? Yeah, you know, I, growing up, I wanted to be a doctor. You know, I mm. wanted to be um, a pediatrician specifically is what I really wanted to be to like help okay. children, to help heal children. Because I, I had um, a pediatrician named Dr. Iggy and she was so sweet to me all the time when I was a kid. Um, and I was like, I want to, I want to be like her. Um, and, you know, when I came to them with the vision of like, I want to be an artist, um, my mother was like, absolutely, you could be anything you want to be, um, wow. but just be damn good at it. <laughs> you yeah. know, that was her advice. You know, um, there was kind of no kind of argument or any kind of warnings of like, this is a hard business. This is difficult. Like there was no yeah. kind of that. It was kind of like, all right, if this is what you want to do let's go for it. Let's do it. And, and, and you have to work your ass off to achieve, you know, what you, what you want, what do you want out of your career? Um, and, you know, them being from Guyana, South America in a small village in Mahaika um, to then now having their son have been in a Broadway show and now on TV, it's, you know, uh, to see that come to life for them is, is the American dream um, real. Wow. You know, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, wow. That, that is really an American dream story. And, you know, in a way, even though you didn't become a doctor, I mean, playing Kristoff on Frozen, we'll get to that in just a second. You know, you are helping kids in a way. Yeah. I mean, also, I believe that the work of like an actor, an artist is is kind of healing. Right. We are our yes. job is to kind of like make entertainment um, that people enjoy, that people can escape into and, and kind of feel better leaving by leaving from having a catharsis. Um, those are all kind of things that are healing to not, not the physical body, but like the spiritual body. Um, mm -hmm. And so I do think that we are doctors in some weird um, form. You know, we're not exactly therapists. We're not exactly, mm -hmm. you know, surgeons, but we do kind of perform um, an act of healing on the body and the mind and the spirit. Um, right. So I, I do think I lucked out and that, that, that I'm getting to not only have more fun than a doctor would, but also <laughs> still do the work. <laughs> yeah. So you, you've actually had a lot of insane experiences. You, uh, is it true? You did a workshop 
uh, with Yaya from Watchmen. Yeah, yeah, Yaya, <laughs> brilliant, brilliant actor. Um, Yaya was, he was shooting, what was he shooting? He was shooting something and he was late for the first day of that reading and they actually had me like read his part um, for mm -hmm. the first day. And I was like, this is such a good role damn I want to do it and then Yaya walks in and I was like nah it's Yaya's like Yaya is king he's amazing oh um, man really sweet gen gen generous guy um and from that moment I remember watching that that um that reading and I'd be like you ain't gonna be doing this play you're gonna be a huge movie star and here we are today and he really is fantastic mm -hmm. Yeah, and you actually share something within the Walking Dead universe. It's a bit of a stretch, but you had the same role as Coleman Domingo in Passing Strange. That's right. And you know, I, I, I when I got when I when I when it was revealed to the world that I was playing Will, I reached out to Coleman, um, oh, yeah. and I was like, "How awesome to be playing two black queer men playing um, superheroes in the Walking Dead universe." And he was like, "Oh." Oh, how cool, how amazing. And I actually was just reminded that I played his part in Passing Strange about a month ago, because I actually completely forgot that I did that in college. Um, and oh, I college, actually yeah. yeah, I haven't told him um, that I played that yet. So that's gonna be- Really? Important. No, I have not. Um, and he was, you know, he is still so legendary to me and he is kind of like a, um, um, someone I look up to and aspire to be and, and his work ethic is freaking incredible. He, oh, yeah. The way he dives into his characters, the way that he's made Victor Strand into something that is um, so indelible. And so we love watching him on screen. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, I, I, I see. I see what I got to do. I see. I see where the bar has been set um, and I have to, <laughs> I have to meet it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you see that Euphoria standalone episode, you're like, God Ooh. damn it, the bar just got whoo through the ceiling. Um, that was nuts, that episode. Yeah. I was like, I got to watch this again. Yeah, me too. I do have to go back and watch it again. It's a great, it's a great lesson for any young actor um, want to watch two pros really, really listening to each other and really challenging each other in, um, in a, a, a form that you don't really get to see in television anymore. Two people just actually having a conversation and having their words impact each other. It's really, really stunning. Yeah, I imagine. So after college, uh, what is the first move you make? <laughs> first move you make is find a place to live. Yep, <laughs> um, find a place to live. Oh, I luck. I was lucky that I my family lived in Brooklyn, so I lived at home in Brooklyn. Um, but the first move I made was just kind of hitting the ground running, auditioning, um, trying to um, land an acting job. I, and I was very fortunate that right out of school, um, before I even graduated, I was actually working on a small ensemble in, in the small ensemble of a production of Macbeth um, happening mm. at the Park Avenue Armory that was directed by Kenneth Branagh and Rob Ashford. Wow. Um, and so I was like around these, these legendary people. And I was like, I just, ha I, I just have to be a part of this. I have to be a part of this world. Um, and the first job that I landed was a play called Choir Boy, um, which had happened off Broadway and most recently happened on Broadway. Um, mm -hmm. And I got to play Ferris in that and it was really incredible. And that's where I got my equity card and um, I did it also in San Francisco, and that kind of began my journey as an actor. It's it's funny that I didn't really dive into musical theater at first. Um, mm -hmm. I actually kind of just went along doing some plays around the country because I, I found more joy in that. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, the, so I, I I said, all right, I'm out these doors. Man, don't work. Man, don't eat. <laughs> Um, and so I needed to find, you know, work and work that was going to continue to mature me as an actor. And when did when did Frozen come along? So Frozen came along after the plight of me being like, there's no place in musical theater for me. I quit. And really? Then, um, yeah. Yeah. I kind of was like, there aren't any parts. There just aren't people are not writing the roles that I want to see me in. Um, and uh Sutton Foster, who was a huge Broadway star, um, re uh, director reached out to her as he was doing a production of Violet. And he asked her, do you know anybody who could play Flick, which is like a, a lead, the leading man role in the show. Right. And yeah. she gave him my name and I got a call being like, hey, they, would you want to play Flick in Violet? And I was like, I can't, I, I, 
Uh, that's a big sing. I don't know. I haven't sung it. Uh, these chords are really dry. Um, but I said yes, because I was like, all right, let's 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 go for the challenge. Um, and in that challenge, I found my love for, for singing again. Um, and then my manager was like, come back to New York and we'll figure something out. And one day I was just like bored in my house. And I was like, there's an open call for the show Frozen. Um, I saw the movie. I mean, there's no black characters in it, but like, let me go in and see what happens. And then I end up landing the role. <laughs> you know, the whitest so, musical possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah truly. <laughs> truly. Um, and, I mean, they added Sterling K. Brown in the second one because I think they felt bad, but. <laughs> I mean, they <laughs> needed to add him. I mean, they needed some more um, flavor up in that pot. A um, little bit. <laughs> but um, but I was so glad that 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 was my entry into the into into the forefront of the commercial theater because that's what I have been doing all my life. Like you know, mm. playing the cat in the hat, playing the MC, not letting race kind of um prevent or kind of uh, stop me from playing different certain characters. Um, I kind of grew up with this uh, mentality that I could play anything I wanted to. Um, and so that's why when I saw they were bringing me in for Kristoff, I was like, yeah, that makes sense to me because why not? I could play that too, you know? Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so I had a great time with that. I wish I had seen it from the clips I've seen. It looks like you killed it. Uh, you rocked the look as well, which is not easy to do oh, with all those layers. Love, we love a, a nice sweater that shows off the bicep, that shows off the form. <laughs> we love it. We love it. I heard you eat a lot of junk food. How do you how do you stay so fit? I know that's like a stupid red carpet question, but I'm genuinely who interested. Who, who I'm told genuinely... you I ate a lot of junk food? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, so I would eat pizzas during intermission of Frozen. We would order the pizza right around like 20 minutes into the show, right before I get right before I make my first entrance. And by the time I came off stage for intermission, the pizza would be there. I would grab the box, go up to our room, and me and the two boys who played Sven were all in the same dressing room. And we, like, our show was very athletic. Like, we were running around trying to pick up after these damn princesses making a mess and, and destroying the world. And we're tired <laughs> by the time, halfway through, we're like, I'm tired of this. I need something to eat and refuel. Um, and so we would have pizza, we would have um, chicken fingers a lot. Um, and I, I think that like at the end of the day, I ended up sweating most of it out wearing winter clothes through the hottest days of the summer on stage was not fun. You're um, like the Michael Phelps of Broadway. Oh my gosh. Just like swimming in my own costume. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, I'm like, I, who let that puddle on the floor? Not Elsa. It's me. <laughs> you know <what> I mean? <laughs> oh um, man. Um, yeah, yeah. Sweat never bothered you anyway. Um, so <laughs> Did, how many shows did you do a week? Yeah, we did eight shows a week. Eight shows um, a week, Jesus. which is rough on the body, especially because you know I had a stunt where I like fell through a bridge in the show, and that started to hurt my back. Um, but like, it, it's rough when you do an eight. People think that Broadway performers got it easy doing the same thing over and over again, but it is really rough to do those two show days back to back, especially when it's a five show weekend. Um, wow. Yeah, it's crazy and it's madness. I mean, then you're also like trying to live your life and like go for drinks with friends. And then you're like, I really can't. I really got to get in this cab and go home and sleep. Or you're like trying to do family functions and you have to like miss them or like call out of the show to go to your like sister's graduation and things like that. Um, and then you're still auditioning during the day for the next project. So it's it's kind of madness. Um, yeah. And you kind of just, you kind of get used to spreading yourself super, super thin. And so that's how you stay healthy when you eat junk food. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know that there were stunts involved. Uh, did the yeah. did your work with the mystery of Edwin Drew help you with that? Oh my gosh! So in high school, when I did mystery of Edwin Drew, we flew. Like there was actually like a whole crew that came in and installed three flying units, and three of the principal characters flew in this in dream sequence. And I was doing like backflips in the air, and they had gotten the guys from the football team to come like pull the ropes and stuff like that. So it was like the ultimate like, and they had the best time. And then they ended up putting them in like the last scene of the show. And so they were like, we got to be actors too. And so it was the coolest Aww. collaboration in high school of like having like the lead quarterback, like in the, the wing, like pulling me up into the air. And then like us like singing 
singing together in the final number of a musical. It was so surreal. It was like I was in my own version of High School Musical, the musical, you know? Of the musical, yeah, or Glee <laughs> or something like that. Wow. That's... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you see the recent movie Soul, the Pixar movie? I did. I saw it and I absolutely loved it. Kemp Powers um, is a genius. And he also did One Night in Miami, which came out about like uh, last week. I Freaking need to incredible. see that. Freaking incredible. Regina Leslie. King, right? Regina King's directorial debut, Leslie Odom Jr. as Sam Cook. I mean, it's just Jeez. an embarrassment of riches. Um, <laughs> but Soul, I particularly loved um, because like it just explained so many things. It, it, it helped uh, explain so many things of how I feel as a human being of being like, I want to live my life every day to its fullest ability, you know? Yeah. And from Soul, uh, I thought something that was really poignant that I'm applying to you was when, you know, he gets the gig with that jazz band and he this is like his dream and he finally gets it. But then he feels let down because he's like, wait, I thought once I got hmm. this, it would all be over. This, this right. is it. I, I made it. But they're like, no, you have to work like this is it's still going. So I wonder mm. if you had any parallels like you were just saying, uh, yeah. watching it where you're just like, oh, what? like getting to Broadway. I mean, that's the dream for a lot of actors. Well, that's what I'm when you get sure. there, you're like, shit, I got to do eight shows a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And but then also you're like, what's next? You know, sure. that question, sure. like, OK, I, all right. So I, I crossed it off the list. Like, what do I do now? Um, yeah. and, and instead of it, like. And that's when you know that like your life has to be more than work. Your life cannot be just work. You know, there, there is other parts of life. Then work is just a one small sliver of the pie. Um, but I did have that moment of like, I, so I just made my Broadway debut. I played a leading man on Broadway um, in a hit musical that made a lot of money. You know, what do I do next? Um, and that's when I began to write. And that's when I be, my interest in film and TV began to, to peak. Um, and I said, I want to make a crossover into the TV and film world. Um, that's what I want to do. And so I began the journey of that. And somehow, some way, the universe had some other plan of bring, bringing Hercules into my life. Um, but uh, but that is that was such a soul moment for me to be like. That was. I, I remember I was on stage. It was like the day before Halloween. And Olaf was saying something. And all of a sudden his line became blah, 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 blah in my head. And I was like, what did I, what did I, did I just hear? What did I just hear? Like, I, what, where am I? What am I doing? It was like, it was a moment of like, what is happening? And I remember, I think it was my line or something. And Patty's looking at me, who plays Anna. She's looking at me like, it's your line, it's your line. And I was like, oh shit, I totally just blanked and left this universe. Um, Cause wow. I had a wake up moment there of like- Out of body experience. Truly, truly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you're like signing autographs and taking selfies with fans after the show, like, are you, do you sometimes look at yourself outside of your body? Like, who is that guy? How did this happen? This is insane. It, it is insane. And it was insane. But also, like, I tried my best to, like, be present in sure. all the moments with the fans, particularly because I was like, you know, they are, they have waited to kind of see me and to experience mm. me. And so I want to exp give, uh, give them a genuine experience of me. Um, so I tried to be present during the autographs and the stage door and um, any interview that I would do or anything like that. Um, because I think I mean, without them, there's there's no industry, you know? Sure. Yeah. You mentioned uh, Hercules. You actually had Alan Menken write original songs for that, right? Hercules. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Alan Menken wrote, um, I think about six new songs in total for the for the stage musical version um and what a freaking honor to be in the presence of the greatness that is the 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 music that we know and love for disney um and for him to be like hey here's this new song bring it to life wow. and to be like um i'm going to find ways to make it tailor-made to your throat and your instrument and how you sing and how you vibe with this role um I think it was honestly the greatest honor of my life to play that part um, and to bring it to New York City in the way that we did. I really I need them to make a live action. That needs to be the next live action because some of these live you know, actions like Lion King, I don't really know, but then. <laughs> right, and Aladdin. I need, I need this Aladdin. to happen. Yes, Hercules yes. would be amazing. I mean, imagine just like hearing like 
Jennifer Hudson and Beyonce and like Zendaya and like, oh yeah, I've seen all the fan casting. From, yeah, yeah, bring it Danny on. Danny DeVito can it. stay. You can be Hercules. Yeah, Ariana Grande is Meg. I don't know. Um, yes, yes, absolutely. I'm still mad that Lizzo wasn't cast as Ursula in the upcoming Little oh, Mermaid musical. I I'm I, I, no offense to Melissa McCarthy, she's great, but. Well, just a missed that, opportunity. I agree. I think Lizzo would have ate that up and tore it up in a way that's like, <laughs> just like, I dare you to think of anybody else for this part. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. Obviously, Broadway's been severely affected with COVID um, mm -hmm. and a lot of people are coping. Have you seen, but have you seen like it evolve sort of like online? Like there's the Ratatouille musical on TikTok. I don't know if you're aware of that. Yes, I am. I am. My, <laughs> my best friend is in Ashley Park. No um, way. Yeah, and so I, 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 you know, naturally I watched anything that she's doing because that's what a friend duty is. Um, and I actually really loved it. I loved the innovation of it. I love that they were like, let's just take the music that people are making on this site that it actually is good and make it into something of a structure and give it a, a space to be seen. Um, yeah. I think that, you know, people are creative as, so creative out here. I mean, people are are, are finding ways to, to make, theater to make art happen regardless of this shutdown um and i think it's really inspiring to be like someone's like hey like i just wrote this song like for example the new craze right now is the bridgerton musical and everyone's like jelani you should play simon and i'm like yeah, yeah be you'd be the duke <laughs> yeah that'd be amazing um and you'd be perfect is um, i was just thinking that i didn't want to say it but <laughs> Um, and you know, the music is really good to hear like what's being made out there. I'm like, like damn, that is really good. Like, I, I want to do that. Like, I actually would have a blast doing that. Yeah, um, I don't see why, why Disney wouldn't take, you know, pay all these people and do a Ratatouille musical or, yeah. I mean, they did Spider-Man the musical, so fuck it. Like, <laughs> mine as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh man no offense oh, to spider-man god i feel like bringing up spider-man the musical is like worse than bringing up Macbeth in the theater it's like just don't it's, just don't, just don't so say it's, it. <laughs> it's like the nickelback of broadway <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. maybe has a little too much hate but you know people need a punching bag so uh yeah. it's fine everything can be a hit it's because there's gotta be some flops there's gotta be some <laughs> <laughs> for real for sure um so now let's get on to world beyond um how Ooh. did that opportunity come to you world beyond um kind of came to me at random i want to say um it was you know a self-tape that i made um for this character that was very not you know they, they i had to sign ndas and it was kind of like they are not telling you what the story is really about they're just giving you kind of like a dummy scene and you, I made the tape and then like, didn't hear anything for like six months. Um, and then finally they were like, hey, can you come play this part in Virginia next week? And you're like, what, <laughs> what, what, what even is this? What's going oh on? Oh my God. Um, and originally I auditioned for, you know, for just a guest star, you know, to come on mm -hmm. an episode and, and do it. Um, I had no clue who was involved with the show. Um, I had, to be honest with you, I had not really seen much of The Walking Dead before. I That's remember okay. like, watching like the first episode of the original series and then um, I didn't continue on. Like that was back in, back in the beginning, way, way, yeah. when I first started. During quarantine, I got to really watch the first five seasons and fuck, I loved it. So I good, right? Oh, it's so good. Oh my God. Those, the first four seasons are just like, packed with action and drama and you're just like the stakes are like so high um and watching Shane and Rick and, and Andrea and Michelle I mean it's just like I was like this is this is genius this is genius um and so uh World Beyond came into my life and I got on set and I remember the first thing <laughs> when I got on set was they're like can you improv um something to start the scene and I was like I don't know where I am I, I don't know who I am I don't know what I'm doing here is is Beyonce in this world like what is like what are we even doing how am I supposed to improv something but I don't know who I am who am I yes anding <laughs> yeah yeah um and so the director and the writer pulled me aside and they finally clued me in what was going on and what the world was like and I was like ah okay got it we can roll with, I can roll with this now I understand I'm on the page. Let's go. Um, yeah. But it was so cool to be a part of, of 
of this universe, to be a part of this universe, of this fan base that is so huge um, and, and the content that is so good. Um, I do think The Walking Dead makes some really juicy characters, really complex and really, um, I think humans are best when we bring out our contradictions. And I think there are so many contradictions within Will um, and within Will and Felix's relationship also. Um, and so I'm really excited to be a part of the party. Yeah, how, how much did you, how well did you know Nico uh, before the production, if at all? Not at all. Like not literally at all. not at all. I remember they wow. showed me a picture of him when I was doing my um my uh my fitting, and I was like, "Who is that?" I mean, that guy look uh, that guy looks familiar to me. I can't really pin it though. They were like, "Yeah, he plays Felix," and I was like, "Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool." And then I get on set and I like see him in person. I'm like, "That's the bro from Younger." <laughs> oh my gosh. And they are they are extremely loving and welcoming, and they kind of took me into their arms, and they were like, "Let's go on this ride, baby." And I was like, "I don't know who you are, really," and I have to turn to you and say, "I love you," but let's do it. <laughs> uh, the yeah. two of you had fantastic chemistry. Uh, you'd never be able to tell that you guys are virtually strangers when you were filming those scenes. Um, so that worked out really well, and it's sad because. I haven't seen uh, outside of like Modern Family and some other media, like just, you know, a gay couple just seems so normal on TV, mm -hmm. but it was really, especially in The Walking Dead, we've had gay characters before, but in my opinion, a lot of the relationships weren't fully developed enough. So it was nice to just get like glimpses of your life. And um, yeah, yeah. yeah, that was refreshing. It, it was refreshing to me as an actor too, to be like, there is nothing that I have to put on right now. Like I don't have to put Literally, on- Literally, you did not have a shirt on. <laughs> yeah, that was a surprise. I actually didn't know that was happening until the day that was happening. And then I got the pages and I was like, oh, like I'm about to be shirtless. Like luckily I've been doing my pushups. Um, <laughs> you like drop the pizza in your hand. You're like, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, shoot. <laughs> Um, uh, and especially next to Nico, uh, who is like the most jacked human being I've ever seen. So I'm like, I look like skinny McGinney and you're over here looking like the Hulk. And so, um, I'm going to get my act together. Um, so I've actually gained like 25 pounds. Um, what? Since at home or are gyms open in New York? Gyms are open here in New York. Oh my God. I'm so, in LA. We've, they've been oh, closed since March. No. I just bought a weight set because on Amazon is so expensive. but And it's expensive to ship too. But yeah, no, I've been taking my fitness very seriously. I started boxing, um, wow. which really was helpful in the transformation of my body. Um, and, okay, so uh, now you have to play Simon in the Bridgerton musical. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wow, now that I really think about it, it's like, <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, I mean, uh, that's, I forgot what, what the question even was, but- We were know. just talking about uh, sort of, you know, LGBT mean? representation oh, and- yes. um, Oh, yeah. What I was gonna say is that there was no <laughs> kind of, um, there was, it was just two men who happened to be in love, mm -hmm. period. There was no kind of need to explain anything further. Um, and I love that The Walking Dead is kind of um, putting that forward, that, that LGBTQ relationships are nothing different than any other kind of relationship. They right. have the same struggles. They have the same complexities. They get mad at each other. They love each other just as hard. Um, that they, and, and these, particularly with Will and Felix, these are two alphas. These are right. two um, really strong, independent men um, trying to find a way to love each other through their mess. Um, one of the things that I, I admire most about the character Will um, is that he he sees the flaws in Felix and still loves him unconditionally. Like, yeah. I don't know if I'm there in my <laughs> life with anyone, not even my own sister, you know what I mean? But like, <laughs> but like to, to, to have a character that is so kind of um, uh, willing to, to create space for some for other people in that way is really empowering to play right and have you have they given you any more insight into will's backstory and character or so, is this something you're going to discover in the process hopefully I, I hope that is something that we continue to refine and discover i do you know we did talk about him being from omaha and him having you know um 
been raised by a single mother. That is something that, um, and the, the passion and fire of like wanting to be educated as a way out in the life before the apocalypse, you know, happened. Um, and so, you know, he has this doctorate in criminal psychology and this master's in behavioral psychology. So he can in, immediately walk into a room and, and assess who everyone is, how they're feeling and how they are reacting to each other. Um, and so that's kind of the only backstory that we were, we really were able to flush out. And I'm hoping that, you know, we flush out some more and understand what made him into the man that he is now. I'm excited to see it. I'm so glad to hear you're going back into production. So many things are getting delayed right now. Yeah. And I know AMC has said 2021 for World Beyond season two. So I hope that happens. Um, I think it will. I think that I think that I think they're going to stick to to their plan. And I think that, um, you know, I have no idea what's in store. No idea. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. But I, I can only imagine, based on what we saw from the end of season one of The Walking the World Beyond, that there's going to be a lot of action, a lot yeah. of ass kicking, a lot of um, fight um, in this show, which I think that it's going to be amazing for the show to bring a different energy. Now that you see, you've seen these young kids who began on this journey so naive, um, they are no longer that. They have literally been tainted with blood. I mean, one of the most amazing scenes that I love from the season's finale was when um, Nicholas's tuxedo, um, his, uh, 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 what's the what's the word I'm looking for? What was the fabric? Oh, it, uh, it's, um, oh God, uh, it is- Corduroy, his corduroy, corduroy. suit. His corduroy suit, just like tainted with um, zombie blood. Yeah. Um, and, and that is what he now owns. That's who he is. And that kind of represented to me what, what the whole first season of this show was about, was the getting to that stain, getting to that moment where they are no longer these vulnerable kids and now they're fighters, you know? Yeah. And so we're really gonna see some, some uh, a different kind of gravitas in this new season, which I'm really excited about. I'm excited too. Is it strange knowing that it's only gonna be two seasons? I mean, that's pretty rare for a show. Uh, it's for me, it's not strange because I'm just coming in now and I'm kind of like, Hey, let's join the party. And, but I'm sure for people, for the guys who, you know, began the first season, it is a little strange to be like, Oh, it's coming to an end so soon. But right. at the same time, that means that we get to tell a fuller story, a, a story that has a complete arc, yeah. um, which, it, which sometimes in television, you don't get to do. And sometimes you're like, it's canceled next season. You're like, wait, but we didn't even finish so and so's <laughs> arc in this thing, and and we know we'll never get to know the conclusion. Um, so to know that this will have a conclusion, um, is kind of cool. And to be tied into the wider universe, uh, they're making their right. own like MCU basically, um, right. and being tied into the Rick movies. So that's kind of cool. Let's be, clear. Let's be clear. The Walking Dead and the MCU have very parallel. Um, parallels going on there are a lot of people who transfer from literally from the world of the walking dead to the mcu um so i remember being at like the arc light at midnight when black panther came out with all my friends and when i saw deny on screen i was like she's leaving the show like there's no way i was like she <laughs> is meant for bigger i mean she's so amazing as michonne and then sure yeah. enough like two months later deny guerrera is leaving the walking dead and i was like but I'm, I'm yeah. so happy for her. I mean, she's, she's another one that's just killing it, like charities, philanthropy, also mm -hmm. Broadway writing. Mm -hmm. um, I think, they, I think they, The Walking Dead um, is in tune with people who are kind of um, have such a rich artistry that have a, a wide range of talents um, because I think the shows kind of demand that. Um, yeah. If you look, if you, to be, uh, to be as, um, action-packed and still have the heart that this show and this um this world and this universe um is full of you have to really be that um complex of an actor um yeah. and so i really do think they really hire some amazing actors to be a part of this universe um and she is you know she's legend she's legend. have you met her i have not met her i would love to meet her um, I hope that happens for you. I'm sure it will. I, I hope so too. You know, and I, I kind of, I, as I step into this universe, I, I carry, you know, her work with me and I carry um, Coleman's work with me. Um, and uh, Lenny forget, James. Yes, absolutely. All these amazing legends that have come before me. And now I'm like, I want to step into their, their, their shoes and, and the bring torch. that same energy. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and before you wrap up, you were, uh, you've actually started your own production company, right? 
I did. Millennial Productions? Dumont Millennial Productions. Yes, that is my production company that I started during the pandemic. Um, It actually, the seed of that was planted way before 2020. Um, Back in 2018, when I began writing, um, I'm currently writing some television series and a feature Mm -hmm film wow. um, and uh and so i needed a home to kind of make the these art this art and to develop this art um and so in the middle of the pandemic i was like now is the time i won't have any the time later on to put the uh the the founding the the building blocks on this organization um and i want to do that now so i'm look forward to developing um and to telling stories of first generation Americans that we don't really hear. I'm a first generation American and I want the world to know my story of what I went through in my high school life. Um, and so that's really the series that I'm that my heart is focused on right now. Um, and um, I'm ready to sell and ready to produce and, um, and make some art that I think will reflect the stories of people that we don't really get to see. Yeah, um, I it, mean- it's a, it's a new day in Hollywood. It really is a new day. I know, and I mean this sincerely. Enough people look like me have already told all their stories. I think we've got it all. We get it. Um, so I'm really happy to hear that. Uh, you're yeah. like a quintuple threat. I mean, <laughs> dancer, singer, actor, writer, producer, uh, maybe director. Uh, you know, director. You know what I mean. The only thing I can't fast do metabolism. is metabolism. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, boxer. <laughs> um, um, the only thing I can't do is. Um, is right music, which I'm like, I'm okay with that. I, I you can't have everything. I mean, that's okay. But you I'm can good, always hit I'm up Lin Manuel. Yo, be like good. LMM, come on. You're like LMM, let's go. Um, Lin is amazing. Um, I'm a really good cook too, by the way. So we can add that to the list. Okay, all right. So yeah, I I, I don't know what's after it's sex tuple, I guess. Uh, sex, <laughs> I don't know. Um, that sounds like something else. Anyway. Um, I've actually also heard that you are sneakily a really good Secret Santa gift giver. Who told you that? <laughs> uh, you know, like just things like face masks, socks, head wrap, <laughs> a candle. Oh my God. Um, all sorts of stuff. So, all right. So quick confession. Um, I am rooming with Tati's uh, brother, Alex. No way. That's a yeah. small world. Are you so this kidding This is me? Alex, who I think you Alex, met. what's <laughs> up? <laughs> this world cannot, well, this is the, too small. This is crazy well, to me. Uh, Jelani. What's up, man? The what world is, is going on? Small. I haven't seen you since like 2017 when we were I eating. know. I was just together. talking about that with uh, Johnny earlier. Oh my it God. was so funny. I had to, um, the way that Johnny figured out um that i knew you was uh, i was watching on on twitter and i saw on the oh, walking yeah. dead twitter i saw your picture pop up and i was like wait what and i was like yeah is that jelani wait a second i was like yeah he plays will you do you know him so i showed it to him but i forgot that it was that that obviously he runs the walking dead account mm-hmm. that the connection was there and he was like oh yeah i'm about to do a podcast with him and i was like oh my goodness <laughs> But then Tati spilled the beans because it was supposed to be a huge surprise. But I don't think you connected oh, it because I think yeah. Tati told you that his roommate, me, was working for The Walking Dead. But I, I was like praying. Yeah, but I didn't, I didn't connect. I didn't, I, didn't make the, I didn't make the connection. It was kind of like, exactly. I was like, oh, cool. Maybe I'll see that person on set or something. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, wow, wow, wow. What a small world. It's good to see I, you. You look great. It's hey, You look great, man. Hey, congratulations on all your success. This Thank is uh, incredible. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. We're all huge fans. Thank you. I know. We, we've been planning this for a while. All right. Yeah. Go for it. All right. See you, Alex. Um, <laughs> so I, I just want to say, I want to preface it that I am, I think, a good researcher for these things. So I do, I did do my homework, but I did talk to Tati this morning to get a few more details to kind of <laughs> nard or my way into this. Yeah, no, I this love I love um, giving gifts at the holiday time because it's just like I'm a huge Christmas fanatic. Like when I tell you huge, I mean my Christmas tree is sadly gone. It was just there like oh, hours ago. It just a blank hours wall. Ago. Hours ago, it came down yesterday. I was like, with the inauguration of Joe Biden, my tree can come down. Happy New Year! We're starting a new year, turning a new leaf. Let's yeah. go. So it's all good. But anyway, um, Johnny, that's all I had for you. This is yeah, such a delight talking to you. I've been looking forward to it. So thank you so much for doing this. Of course. Of course. Thanks for having me. Um, and 
I can't wait for you to see what's in store for season two of World Beyond. I can't wait either, man. All right, man. Well, uh, stay safe. Wear a mask. Wear a uh, mask. Social distance. Wash your hands. Do all those um, things. Try not to throw raging parties on boats. Um, and uh, and we'll be good. I'm going to try to do that. Okay. I'll have to get a boat first. But yeah, that sounds good. All right, man. Take it easy. Have a good one. All right. Peace. All right. And that was my interview with Jelani Aladdin. He was really great, right? Small world. I mean, who would have thought? Anyway, we will be back next Sunday night with another fantastic guest who I will announce later on this week on the Walking Dead Twitter. So make sure you are following that. Make sure you're subscribed to Talk Dead to Me on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. Thank you for sticking with us through the hiatus and coming back. I really appreciate it. Until then, stay safe, wear a mask, and as always... Happy birthday to Nate.